One will talk about the challenges we face in immunization programming in the state prior to the uh, coming of the EU signed project. Uh, is mainly we we'll talk of uh, logistics, especially when it comes to the management of a cold chain system. So we are seriously in need of capacity building, system strengthening. We don't have enough uh, health facilities in all the communities. And the health facilities are not accessible to some of our communities. The absence of a working code room, both at the state level and at the area council level. The Provisional 2018 National Demographic Health Survey, published by the National Population Commission of Nigeria, shows a progressive significant increase in the immunization coverage across the states from 13% in 2003 to 25.3% in 2013 and now 31.3% in 2018. This increase can be attributed to the various efforts and intervention made by the Nigerian government in conjunction with other development partners towards uptake of routine immunization across the country. Uh, Nigeria primary healthcare system was weak. Uh, there were weak administrative uh, structures. Primary healthcare systems uh, were not uh, working optimally. Uh, and this really uh, led to the establishment of the national program on immunization. But rooted in this was the appalling results uh, that showed uh, from the 2003 uh, National Demographic and Health Survey that the coverage for immunization was right around 13 percent. This was a wake-up call. Despite Nigeria being a middle-income country, there are still a lot of children, I'm told more than 200,000 a year, that die uh, from diseases that can be prevented through vaccination. So that in itself is already a very strong rationale but uh, through all our support in the health sector, we try to contribute to uh, improving the health systems, which can help Nigeria to improve its performance, because in all indices, uh, Nigeria performs very low. Before the EU sign support, we were using the uh, conventional refrigerators to store vaccines at the facilities. And you know some of these facilities are located in the very remote areas and they had challenges with electricity. Yes, our challenges include frequent breaking down of uh, cold chain equipment in the facilities. But then unfortunately we couldn't have a, 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 a function, at least a coaster that would be able to deliver that mandate due to, you know, we have structural, uh, we don't have enough structure and you know, logistics to run the coastal was also uh, one of our challenges, but especially the space, the structure, and also the equipment. There was no agency, I mean the primary health care development agency, there was none. Uh, attempt was made to have the bill passed, uh, by, but uh, the bill got uh, lost on the way. So there was no agency. And also the local government system which is uh, responsible for primary health care. They were not, uh, you know, there was no political commitment by them, coupled with the fact that uh, they don't have a lot of money. With a population of over 185 million people in Nigeria, 4.3 million of the 7 million children born in Nigeria every year fail to get fully vaccinated before their first birthday, according to the UNICEF's 2016-2017 Multiple Indicator Cluster Survey, to support the Nigerian government's effort in eradicating vaccine-preventive diseases between 2002 to 2019. The European Union have invested over 200 million euros, specifically through three projects. They include the European Union Partnership to Reinforce Immunization Efficiency, EU Prime, 2002 to 2009. The European Union support for routine immunization in Kano, EU Shriek, 
2007 to 2011, and the European Union Support for Immunization Governance in Nigeria, EU sign, 2011 to 2019. Nigeria um, has an um, economic cooperation relationship with friendly countries, and um, the EU countries are part of this relationship. Um, the EU um, has um, intervened in various sectors of the Nigerian economy. Um, in fact, it's one of the largest donors to the Nigerian, uh, um, to the support for Nigeria. And um, since 2002, they have intervened in health sector, being one of the sectors um, in the country. And um, there have been several uh, programs. We've had, like you've mentioned, the EU Prime, the EU SWIC, and uh, currently the EU sign. And um, this um, support has been mostly in the immunization delivery service. So what EU sign is doing is to build on the achievements of that particular, of those particular earlier supports. The, the project is designed as an embedded project within the government system. That is to say, the, the management of the project is not, the management arrangement is not done outside government institutions. Everything is done within uh, the existing government structures. So to that extent, the National Permanent Health Care Agency designs its own plans, and these plans are in line with the national development agenda. So all what we do is to ensure that the resources that are made available from EU are targeted at what the agency wants to do at, uh, to implement as much as possible those plans. The EU does not dictate what the government should do. The government determines is the, is the, is the, drive, is the, driving, the government is in the driving seat. So with the EU sign, the difference uh, with the focus on the governance uh, structure is to embed the management team within the existing government mechanisms. And the uh, hope is that there will be some form of mentoring, transfer of uh, knowledge and capacity, so that when the project ends, we still have a critical mass of government staff that can carry on the um, activities. So in the USAM project, um, the wisdom there was that they, they hired a state coordinator, which came and worked with the state accountant, the state immunization officer, and a focal person in the immunization office. Uh, you see, when you have resources, you have human, you have material, and you, have, uh, and you don't have the capacity, then nothing will work well. So that is why you sign support is key and it make a huge impact because it's, it's, a, it's a targeted system strengthening by, you know, building capacity and all that. That was what we were liking. The overall objective of EU sign project is to contribute to the reduction of childhood morbidity and mortality of children under the age of five in Nigeria due to vaccine preventable diseases by making routine immunization permanently available and contribute to the interruption and the transmission of the virus and total eradication of polio in Nigeria. This component was implemented between the European Union and the World Health Organization. The project in alignment with the federal government, primary health care rehabilitation program constructed new cold stores and health facilities while also rehabilitating old cold stores and health facilities these includes boreholes and standby generators. Provided 757 direct drive solar refrigerators in health facilities in the focal states and the FCT. Provided 29 four wheel drive vehicles to support vaccine logistics and other related commodities to their point of need. Supply of 136 computers. Technical support that include training of health workers, data management, community-based stakeholders, ETC, strategic planning and other related activities. So when EU came into Shongom local government, they were able to provide the bus 
which is now a road that is helping us to travel to the hard to reach area for service delivery, for conveying our vaccine from the state headquarters down to the local government, then down to the service delivery point. Before EU sign, we already have a MOU, that is Memorandum of Understanding in Kano, that is uh, actually for routine immunization. But the presence of EU sign as system strengthening instituting accountability, uh, it has done a lot. Uh, it has done a lot in the area of logistics, vaccine security and logistics. EU sign supported all the technical working groups. Before now, the LG has been recording red and struggling to record yellow. But I want to tell you that now we are recording green. EU has been a contributing factor to this great success of climbing from green or yellow that was crawling to green. I mean from red to yellow we were crawling to green. Is the support of the EU. Because if the EU did not support us with this storage, I don't know how it will have been. Our health workers' capacity were built. This leads to improved delivery and our performance rose. So they said that we were first in 2017 in immunization in Nigeria. The state government has also renovated 63 PHCs, three per local government, and each was equipped with basic equipment, basic furniture. We were given tricyclic ambulances. We call them keke in the local uh, palace for prompt referral. The contribution of um, EU has really assisted uh, since we know that immunization is the entry point. And uh, we have been able to use immunization as a rallying point. In fact, one of our major interfaces with the local government is the area of immunization. And with the assistance of EU sign, strengthening our routine immunization services, we have been able to entrench um, immunization services across the 20 LGA, and that has also been our line of communication with each of the 20 MOHs in the 20 local government of Ogun State. For the implementing agencies to to sustain the gains that have been achieved through the support to improve immunization governance. The National Primary Health Care Agency has carried out a number of reforms in the last two, two and a half years to lay a solid foundation to deliver primary health care services in the country. The EU also has uh, supported um, primary health care under one roof, especially with the current EU support to immunization project. And he did this through galvanizing support for establishment of the state primary health care government agencies and board across our 23 states and the FCT. By 2014, we were just at a score of 7% in implementation of primary health care under one roof. So with the assistance of EU, they actually brought it to our notice. And from that point, with the cooperation of our governor, he made sure that the agency was established in 2015. All across the country, all states have now established the state primary health care boards. That is fantastic. Right? And then even with that, in terms of achieving the nine pillars, the EU sign project has been very, very key in providing uh, monitoring for the scorecards to see in the development of the scorecards to see how the states are doing so that on a regular basis we're able to show uh, to the states, here are the nine elements for you to succeed uh, in implementing primary health care under one roof. Here is a scorecard that shows how you have done. The EU sign project has also been able to help resuscitate um, health 
intervention across some of our com communities. Uh, one of the notable ones is the Fajor community. Fajor community is in Abelkta South and uh, it's a community that is heavily populated and um, if they will seek any health intervention they have two options, it's either they go to another local government, which is close to them, that's another local government, or move back in time to another ward in the local government. But with the intervention of um, EU sign, they have been able to give the community a state-of-the-art health facility. And the facility is equipped to undo modern child health intervention. If you consider governance in general, you cannot carry out governance of anything without taking into consideration the people that you want to deliver service to. So under the NPCDA uh, strategies, part, one of the key strategies they have is to strengthen what we call the community engagement. So a lot of communities where facilities are, are established are brought into partnership, they are involved to ensure that they play active roles in managing the health services that are being delivered to them.